Let me bring in my guest, trial attorney Jamie White, on the program today. He practices law in East Lansing, Michigan. Okay, Jamie, uh, what do you think of what defense counsel said to the jury? I'm not impressed, Julie. You know, I, I, I understand that they don't have to do anything, but what I would suggest is they probably shouldn't have done anything, you know, in, in this particular um, set of circumstances. The, In my opinion, the only defense available is preventing the DNA from coming into court. Um, arguing that this defendant didn't have a motive. Um, I, look, sociopaths don't have motives. This was a violent brutal homicide and rape um so you know to suggest that because pictures were displayed do not fit some sort of criteria or that they uh, you know arguably should be connected directly to these victims i i think is ridiculous um so you know from my point of view i think that uh you know he had to do something arguably but i think he's on the wrong foot I, you know i think arguing that this man didn't do it is not going to get him there. I suspect there's been pretrial motions associated with the evidence, but what we're going to see during this trial, I suspect, is uh, a defense expert that's going to get to the DNA. And 12 people, this is confusing evidence. We have 30 years of evolutionary thought processes that have gone into this sort of analysis. And if you can convince one or two people that the evidence is not reliable, um, this lack of, for better words, gentleman has a chance, but uh, I'm not impressed by the opening at all. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm with you, Jamie. I'm with you. You know, I am a big proponent. You know this. You're a friend of the show. We love having you on. And, you know, when you do trial advocacy, you got to come with a story. You do. You have to take a position. What is your story? What do you want the jury to believe? Why do you want them to find in favor of your client or if you're representing the state or the Commonwealth? Whatever it is. And I I, I don't like when, when attorneys just get up there and kind of leave the jury, you know, to their own devices. You, you have to take them somewhere. And here, uh, this defense team might have a shot because of a lot of witnesses who uh, have passed away, are unavailable, um, especially if they can get a good expert witness to refute the validity of that testing. Uh, you know, they might have a better shot than, than people may think. Uh, at this point. And so I, I'm kind of, I, I'm disappointed. I'm like you, I wanted a little more uh, from that witness. Um, tell me, you know, in terms of the state and, and telling the story and uh, getting the jury on their side, did you think that the prosecution did an effective job painting the picture? Or do you think that more could have been done there from them as well? So I, I do think that they did an effective job. I think they're giving a little bit too much leeway to the defendant at this point in time. You know, they spoke, it appears that they're already playing defense as far as his right. lapse of memory. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't believe that any of that really is relevant unless he testifies. So I don't know. I mean, I suppose if he's given statements to the police, Julie, you know, over the course of this investigation, I don't know if that's the case, then there could be credibility issues. But to sort of go on defense and suggest that he's lying about his memory, I, I don't know that that's relevant. I don't think any of that is important unless he gets up and takes the stand, which is unclear at this point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, their, their case is very straightforward. You know, there's a brutal crime and his DNA is at the scene on both victims and throughout the home. Unless he can explain it being there, or again, defense attorneys can somehow find a way to confuse the jury or raise some level of reasonable doubt. You know, I, I don't, I, I'm surprised, uh, to your point earlier, I'm surprised that we have not seen some level of uh, negotiation to save this person's life. Yes. Um, you know, I, I really am surprised by that because there is a possibility that the jury could get confused by the DNA in this case. Uh, but, yeah, I think the state did a great job short of playing defense. Um, you know, they, they've laid out their case. The, the experts are going to testify about, well, they've already laid out, you know, one in 750 billion, I think, was the number. And, I, you know, again, with incredible. I mean, there's no question this man was at the scene and contributed to these victims. Um, so, uh, I, you know, they have a little bit of work to do, but I suspect they're going to get there. 